Hey guys, Joe here at JP Details and welcome to the fourth installment of the world's most ridiculous concourse preparation detail and today we'll be completing a two stage refining process to bring the performance blue paintwork back to an impeccable condition. In the first episode we washed and decontaminated the focus, in the second we completed a two stage wet sand and in the third episode we completed the two stage compounding process. If you haven't watched those videos already then be sure to check them out. If you are new to the channel then please consider subscribing and if you haven't dropped the video a like already because you know it'll be a banger then please feel free to go ahead and give the like button a tickle and let's try and smash 5000 likes. The two stage compounding process was finally finished in the last episode of the series and I honestly couldn't be happier. We are still left with a small amount of surface marring from the medium compounding abrasives which is due to be restored with the initial refining stage. Ford paint in general is not an overly hard type of paint, in fact I would say that it does fall somewhere around medium in hardness. The Rupes Yellow Fine Finishing Polish and the Rupes Yellow Fine Polishing Pads are going to be used for the third stage of machine polishing to remove the marring left behind from the medium compounding stage. The marring is only just noticeable and if the paintwork did happen to be a little harder then we probably would have got away with a two stage machine polish i.e. a compounding stage followed with a single refining stage. Due to the paintwork being a little on the softer side or let's just say medium, it is going to need a three stage machine polish at the bare minimum. But due to this car being prepared to the ultimate show car standard, the fourth stage will purely be used to bring out the sharpest finish in the paintwork in the ultimate gloss level. Apply a sufficient amount of polish to the pad which is usually between four and six dime size blobs and apply the pad to the paint and spread out on speed setting four. Continue to work the polish in for as long as you want on speed setting 6 and just remember that generally speaking, the longer you spend, the better the finish will be. It's all about finding the happy balance between working the polish in for a long enough amount of time over each single section of paintwork and when you fully diminish down the abrasives within the product residue. That's when the panel can be buffed. If I'm being completely honest then figuring out how long you should spend working the polish in will become second nature after you've done a few cars. You can do the cross hatch pattern with a relatively slow arm speed where you go vertical twice and horizontal twice whilst keeping your working section to a manageable size. I do use this technique across all applicable panels with the only exception of if the panel is too small. I would complete this crosshatch type pattern but I don't religiously go horizontal then vertical then horizontal again and vertical for the final time in that exact order. I do tend to mix it up with whatever feels most comfortable but I can guarantee that I will complete the crosshatch pattern more than twice in each direction. This technique is going to ensure that you don't miss any areas and let's say that if you did do it twice in both directions with the same slow arm speed you will leave a uniformed finish over the entire vehicle. This crosshatch pattern is used with both the compounding stages and the refining stages and if you overlap each pass by 40% and you maintain that slow arm speed then you'll be on to a winner. I like to finish each panel as a whole so I'll use the Rupes Bigfoot LHR15 to hit the bigger and more open areas then I'll swap to the Mini Bigfoot for the smaller and tighter sections. That way you will only need to buff each panel once and then cross the panel off the list and then move to the next one. We should now be able to see a clear difference from polished versus compounded and in all fairness there will be little to no work left to do after this initial polishing stage. This fine abrasive refining stage is removing 100% of the medium compound abrasive marring and leaving no further marring behind. The finish on the Focus is well and truly coming back to life which is a massive confidence booster and some true inspiration to crack on and get the rest of the car done. Hit as many areas as you can with the bigger machine to utilise the 5 inch pad before swapping to a mini Bigfoot with a 3 inch pad for the smaller and more conveniently sized sections. 
Each of the Rupes machines, so the bigger LHR15, the Mini Bigfoot 75E Duetto and the Rupes Hybrid, all like to work at their best when used on the correct size body panel. You can tilt each of the machines to get them in situ with the curved body panels, but sometimes by swapping to a different size machine will allow you to polish or compound the areas to achieve a better result in a timely manner. The entire car was treated with this initial polishing stage and I must remind you of the importance of keeping on top of the product residue within the pads. You will find that usually after each panel there will be a dried layer of polish on the surface of the pad. This layer needs to be brushed off to allow the polishing pad to remain working efficiently. I did have a few pads blow out on me throughout the entire machine polishing stages, so these pads obviously need to be replaced when they essentially implode. If you do notice that your machine polisher is bobbing up and down on the paintwork excessively or if there are any heavy vibrations, then at first you will want to clean the pad out with a microfiber towel, reapply a small amount of polish and try again. If the problem persists, then I would recommend swapping to a fresh polishing pad and start over. The gloss black trim was treated in the same way as the performance blue paintwork as it did suffer from quite a substantial amount of marring from the medium compounding stage. Like I mentioned in the last video, gloss black trim does tend to be a little softer than the rest of the paintwork and with it being black, it also shows the defects quite a bit more. All gloss black sections were given an incredibly thorough initial machine polishing stage and after the product residue was wiped off, it's almost like looking into a distant galaxy due to how deep and glossy the black trim is now looking. Up to this point we have done a 2000 grit wet sanding stage, a 3000 grit wet sanding stage, a heavy coarse compounding stage, a medium coarse compounding stage and I have now finished the fine finishing stage. The sixth instalment of the major stages to be carried out on the car is the ultra fine finishing stage. This final machine polishing stage is purely going to be given to make sure that the paintwork is at its ultimate gloss level. There are no longer any marks or marring in the paintwork from any of the previous abrasive stages. A white Rupes ultra fine polishing pad and the white Rupes ultra fine finishing polish is yet again going to be thoroughly worked over every centimetre of the blue and black paintwork. The LHR15 is going to do the brunt of the work for the bigger and more open panels and the smaller mini Bigfoot Duetto is going to finish off the smaller areas. I will then swap to the Shine Mate EP803 for the real intricate areas and for the even tighter and impossible sections to get to, they will be finished off by hand. Every last section of paintwork, whether it be performance blue or gloss black, is going to get polished in one way or another as if my life depends on it. Like I mentioned earlier, this detail has a non-time restricting budget and I simply had two weeks to get it looking as good as I was physically able to. The final finishing stage is working absolute wonders and it's still bringing an even deeper level of gloss from the paintwork. I adapted to a technique of applying the polish on speed setting 4, thoroughly worked in on speed setting 6, then slowed the machine back down to speed setting 4 and went over all areas with a slow arm speed to provide an even softer final finishing pass. This should effectively dual the paintwork that little bit further to get it looking as good as it physically can. I never do things by halves but please excuse the cotton bottoms because after almost two weeks of being in the same trousers I fancy the change. Throughout this entire ridiculous detail I must have had the camera on for around 25% of the total time spent. I reckon I have the best part of 50 hours worth of footage which has rammed my 1TB external hard drive and my computer's 1TB internal hard drive to maximum capacity. I've captured so many decent shots of different angles whilst doing all of the different stages but it really has left me in a right pickle for selecting which shots to use. I can't begin to explain the level of detail that went into the focus, I got so carried away it's unreal. I booked the focus into my own diary for a two week slot and it even went over into a third week due to how long everything was taking whilst pushing the car to perfection. I've wanted one of these cars since they were first released back in 2009 and I've worked incredibly hard to be able to buy it. From day one when I started looking to buy one, I knew it was going to have the biggest detail that YouTube has ever seen. 
I did attempt to get this series done in one single video, but by the time I had finished writing the script for the compounding stages alone, I was already on page 9. A fully scripted 2 hour long video I think is a tad overkill, by doing these multi part series allows me to spend a bit more time working on each video, quite simply so I can offer more education and enjoyment to the viewers. This series is going to involve 7 episodes in total of the focus's main exterior detail and I will then upload videos of the wheels off detail, undercarriage deep clean and preservation, brake caliper refurbishment and no doubt plenty more videos on the focus as time goes by. As always thank you for watching, let's try and smash 5000 likes and please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Feel free to give me a follow on Facebook and Instagram, just search JP Details and I'll hopefully catch you in the next one.